<laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Obsession. I'm Carl Bethke. I'm Mike Stadler. Mike, we got a big one today. Yes, we do. You know, we were in North Dakota this year over gun season. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> but uh, from what we were hearing, apparently the deer numbers down here in Wisconsin. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. It's kind of crazy. So I have really to say it sounds made up. It's made up. <laughs> it's made up. Uh, <laughs> now, in, in certain areas, I think there probably are. Maybe up north where there's a little higher wolf kind of, you know, mm -hmm. numbers and things like that. <clears throat> But I've got a real problem with a lot of southern Wisconsin. A lot of complaining about the deer numbers are down. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, this and that. Well, guess what? You're going to get our opinion. It's coming. Uh, southern Wisconsin. If you're in southern Wisconsin and you're complaining about deer numbers, my opinion, <clears throat> you've got problems. Agreed. Uh... And this is just what we've seen. Now, we're saying from central Wisconsin south yeah. and both sides east and west of the state. Um, then people are going to talk public and private land. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Are deer numbers down or are people just being choosy? And the, are the deer numbers down? They are down. Yeah. But why are they down? First of all. A couple so, of different reasons. So. Yeah. Couple of facts. I'm just gonna throw them over there, and grab them. All right. Swish them around a little bit. You don't like them? Throw them back in. There. All right. Toss them up. So, 2022 gun tags. Just yeah. gun tags. Yeah. Okay. Which is where we, where all of our crying. I mean, where all of our things like to come from sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, Wisconsin gun tags: 554,898 tags. Yep. Um. 23. This year. Okay. Yep. So numbers are down last year, Phil. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's okay. True. Okay. Yep. So 2022. Yeah. Okay. Gun tags 421,525 yep. tags. Yep. So 133,373 tags less. Yep. Yeah. The number's going to be different. Yep. Because you're not comparing apples to apples for one thing. Right. Well, the big comparison I've seen this year is they compared the numbers to the deer population, what was it, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yep. Okay. Well, again, like you are saying, apples to apples, yep. people. Uh, let's, <clears throat> you know, <sighs> there were far less hunters back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that people of the industry in general, and we can talk about this on another field, but people, the industry wants more and more hunters. Everybody's saying, we want more and more hunters, more and more hunters. Well, that's where all the bitching and complaining comes from. Right. Because now, and don't get me wrong, a, a, a secure, a, a high number of hunters or a, a larger number of hunters is a good thing. But did you ever stop to think that they're, they're promoting all this hunting because that's how they, they make their money? It's my surprised face for you. That yeah, I, I know. This. You looked really shocked on that one. <laughs> I mean, and we see it out west. With more and more hunters, yeah. there's less opportunity uh, to actually hunt. Less tags. And too. then all you hear is the complaining yeah. about that. You know, it's harder to get tagged. You can't mm -hmm. do this. You can't do that. Hunting mule deer. Mm -hmm. Can't hunt big mule deer anymore because there aren't any because they're hit, hit so hard. The mule deer numbers are down, this, that, and the other thing. Well, why are they down? You get more and more hunters killing more and more deer, and they they have a hard winter or whatever. Yeah. It's it, they can't numbers are down, yeah. so then we reduce numbers. They can't come back from that yeah. every time. It it's takes time, happen. you know. And what out west does that we don't like, right? Because we don't get tagged every time. But <laughs> it is the way to do it. Yes, especially in North Dakota, um, we don't get a mule deer tag every year, no. and we're archery hunting. Yes. Um, it's a draw. Yep. The draw goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up. Now it's going down again. Yep. We do have some points. Went down we, yesterday, went yeah. or last year, and now it's going down we again. We may or may not draw. We might. Well, we have said we don't draw. Yes. Of course. But we do know this. When we go back, there will be bigger mule deer to hunt yes. that year. No. Yep. And that's a fact. So that anybody's going to be like, well, my tag are great. Yeah. I get that. You want a tag. Yeah. Everybody wants a tag. Yeah. 
Um, resident gun owners out there, what is it on average? Six years? Yes. To get a muley gun tag. Something like that, yeah. Is on average, six to eight. And out of state, I think it's almost 10 years yeah. now. Guess what? There's big mule deer. There are. There are. You know, why is there big mule deer, Carl? Because they're controlling the number of animals that are being taken. That's absolutely ridiculously 100% correct. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know... Because you can't have both. Well, in our state, here's the other thing that you get gripes about the size of the deer. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin went to a one buck rule. We're going to bring this in because that was another question. Oh, yeah. One buck rule. Scotts goes to one buck rule like Iowa, we're going to have giant deer. Well, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. Not going to lie. Yeah. 100%. Try and pass that in the state of Wisconsin yeah. with the individuals that we got for gun hunting. It'll never state. happen. Never. No effing way. Yeah. And it's, it's no different than looking at your own land. Okay? Yeah. So, you got it's 72 true. acres. Yeah. We want to shoot big deer on Carl's land. Yep. Cool. Everybody around us doesn't care. They shoot everything they want. So now, it makes it harder for us to do that. Right. So if everybody around you does it, everybody can have that opportunity. Yep. But people don't want to give up that tag. Yeah. I gotta shoot. Hole in their I want to shoot pocket. two bucks in yeah. the state of Wisconsin, Mike. You know. I want to shoot. You know. Whatever. The two buck rule. Doesn't Illinois have a two buck rule? Or they had a one buck rule. I'm not really sure anymore. Um, at one point in Illinois, you had a two buck rule. You could shoot two bucks, didn't matter what weapon you had. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought with a two buck rule in Wisconsin, that'd be great. Yeah, because we both hunt them both. We would. When we yeah. come back, we came back this year. Yep. Another prime example. We came back this year early. It yep. was still gun season when we got here. Yep. Remember how many times we gun hunted? No. Yeah, because we didn't. I took my bow one night. Yeah. Two nights. I, I just kind of watched cameras and reviewed a little bit, hoping that something would come and trickle back so I could take my bow. Yeah. And then guess what it was here? Muzzleloader season. Yep. How, many, how many times did we muzzleloader hunt? Mm. We didn't. Well, that was one of the nights I went out yeah. with the bow. Well, with the bow, though. But I took my... It wasn't because I wanted to go. I took, actually, my, yeah. my niece. But you're not out there <laughs> with the gun. No. No. So it's like... Everybody wants a big buck. We've talked this a million times. If you say you don't, you're a liar. It's a fact. Everybody does. I get it. But you have to be able to give something up to get something back in return. To you, want to keep you can't, like, we can't come here every year yeah. on my property and kill like, three bucks, right. four bucks. Right. We can't do it every year because pretty soon you're not going to have them there for a while. No, 100%. <laughs> yeah, because so, it takes time to grow. <laughs> That's exactly how it works. It takes time to grow. It takes time to grow a herd. It takes time to grow size. Everything. I, I personally don't mind a one buck rule at all in this state. No, because I want one buck tag every year. That's gonna be with my bow. Yeah. So I don't care. Yeah. I'll That'd be great that. for me. Everybody's gonna be. Oh my god! I can't. I can't get a gun tag. Oh yeah. yeah. You can have one. Yeah. That's the tag you get. Yeah. Now if you shoot something with your bow, you're done. Yeah. Now you people that want to do both, if you don't shoot <laughs> a buck with your bow. You can shoot one with your gun over the nine-day gun season. Yeah. And if you don't shoot one then, then you can use a muzzle or shoot one. Yeah. And then if you don't shoot it then, then you can get late season hunt with your bow. Yeah. You still have a buck tag. So that's the buck tag. You get one buck. Yeah. And you want to see some big deer, potential world records, yeah, that, come out of the state of Wisconsin, that would happen. But here's the problem. Nobody wants to do it. That'll never happen. Because that state. won't happen. No. It won't. Put that one to a vote you know? in our Conservation Congress. See how that goes. I would love it. Oh, I'd that love to see great. it. Great. Because I'll tell you right now, 80% of the people that are yep. there, maybe not 80, I'm going to say probably 70% of the people are going to vote against that. Yep. And, and another thing that hurts us here. Non-residents. That's a killer for okay. us. Okay. So, and people are like, oh, go ahead. Bitch, complain, I don't care. I non-resident hunt lots Yep. over the years. I know how it works. Yeah. You know how it works. 100%. So, non-resident coming to Wisconsin, how does it work? Now you get a tag. Yep. It's like the goddamn Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah. You get a tag, and you, you get, get a tag, tag. and yeah. you get a tag. That's right. Everybody gets a tag. Well, this time, though, they get two. Oh, now you're sorry. You get two tags now. Right. You know? Plus no tag. It is great. Yeah, great. Kill everything. Yeah. For the same money that we have to pay. Yeah. You know, so uh, we're not even getting money for our own 
state All right. for these animals that are being shot that we yeah. could use. Yeah. Every other state does it. It is an opportunity for the DNR to make <clears throat> revenue, and for some ungodly reason in our state, nobody's taking advantage of that. You're not going to lose out of state number tags if you go to $450 to $500 for an out of state tag. Yep. And if you do, great. Yep. Not lying. Because mm -hmm. we pay far more in that to hunt other states. Yeah. And, I, I, and I'm sorry, but hunting is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Nothing's free, people. That's how it works nowadays. And I, I'm not going to take either side of that because I understand what hell. We never had money when we were younger. You know, but right. nowadays, you know, it's a it's a pay to play program. Ain't gonna lie. It is. You know, and then the yeah. other thing that people are talking about <laughs> with all of this is public land access. Mm -hmm. You know, well, let's talk about public land access, and this is all based into what we're the the question we're talking about. Okay, the deer numbers in Wisconsin, but public land access. You guys who are hunting public land have to realize that the numbers on public land are not always high in certain areas. Or you're just not going in deep enough. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're not the hunter you think you are. Oh, that, what? I'm sorry, but that's how it is, okay? And I get it, I get, because Mike and I hunted public land for years. Yep. We still hunt public land when we go to other states. Yeah. Okay, it's just we're fortunate enough that we have gotten our own land here. But what I'm telling you is you can complain about numbers, but think about what you're doing. You're eliminating your opportunities when you start that complaining. Yep. Fine example, South Dakota. If you hunt private land in South Dakota for certain animals, you will get a tag. Archery. Archery only, Archery. not gun. Yes. Yes. Guns are different because it's easier gonna, to kill them. It, yeah. It, it really, it in is. my opinion, doesn't take effort. Yep. But it doesn't. Um, not to kill an animal. No. Or a mule deer, dude. Yeah, they're just standing. If you can shoot 200 yards, you're going to shoot a giant freaking mule they deer. Another room. Year. It's true. Yeah. You're not lying. <laughs> um, but if you hunt private land, you get a tag. If you hunt public, it's a draw. I think that's the greatest yeah. thing in the nation for yeah. not only the landowners, yeah. because a lot of these people <clears throat> rely on this income from hunters yeah. paying to hunt their properties. Yep. And uh, because you know what a lot of these people don't know is so prime example a place that we go to in South Dakota, the acreage they have. This is what they do. Yeah. They farm that land, they work that land, they run cattle mm -hmm. seven days a week, 365 days a year, the whole family. That's all they do. That's their money. That's their life. So yeah. don't, don't walk around like crap don't stink when these people work harder in two days than you do in a month. Oh yeah, no doubt. And taking that money away from a landowner that needs that cash, yeah. you know, is ridiculous. Yeah. So the system that Carl just described is phenomenal for out there. Yeah. Keeps them making their money, keeps people coming back. You know, and hunting's not supposed to be easy, people. The other thing that Mike <laughs> just mentioned too is really important is is it keeps people coming back. It's not only that landowner. <clears throat> so we're there, let's just say we have to go eat, right? So we have to buy food, we have to buy gas, we have to buy everything in that state. That's income for the state, the local economies. Yeah. Small businesses? Yeah. This is a win-win for that state. That is the smartest system, like I said, in the nation. That South Dakota rule came in last year. Smartest law ever made, I think. And you know, for hunting. If you're a gun hunter, okay. you're a gun hunter, yeah. okay? So you should covet one of these tags if you ever get it. Yeah. Because that's why it's so hard to get. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, where we go in North Dakota, we know places that we could go if we wanted to start sending in to get a non-resident mule deer tag, mm -hmm. okay? I will tell you that 
for a 100% fact. And there's another thing I'm going to tell you right now, that if we sent in and we both drew non-resident gun tags in North Dakota, I will guarantee you this, and people might laugh, I'll guarantee you that we're going to come home with two giant mule deer. Oh, yeah. You know why? Because we know where they are because we bull hunt them. Yeah. This is why you can't just give tags out to everybody. Right. And that is no different than here. Mm -hmm. It's why the deer numbers aren't what they are. Yeah. It's why big bucks aren't as prominent. prominent. Yeah. You know, everybody wants a big buck. Yeah. But you don't get a big buck shooting a small buck. No. I mean, I I don't know the physics. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it works. Age seems yeah. to make them bigger. I'm like, and, here's a, and to go back on that before everybody starts so you know. Get all cranked yeah, up. Yeah, get all cranked up. And by the way, put your stuff in the comments because yeah. we want to hear we what you have to comments. say about this. That's why we go into these. Like, if you want to shoot a small buck, I don't care. Yeah, congratulations. I really don't. If you're happy. Yeah, that is awesome. Like, you should shoot what you want to shoot and be happy with it. Don't shoot it and be like, wow, well, it's because I didn't see anything else. Well, okay. That makes no sense. So then that doesn't make any sense. Especially so, if you're the guy that bitches about yeah. big deer, having big deer around. So, you know what, Carl? Well, I shot this six pointer. It's a year and a half old. Yeah, I've seen him 37 times. Yep. And uh, there's nothing else big, so I killed him the last day. Cool. Real smart guy. Yeah. Don't let him go. Yeah. You know? For next year. I'm like, you just might as well take your foot and shove it all the way up your ass because that's what it sounds oh, like no. when you're and talking like that. That's a fact. That's a complete other fact. In our state, that number one, that's what Mike and I leave for gun season. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be here, we no. don't want to deal with that. We've got people that watch our properties and people that hunt our properties to make sure nobody's trespassing on our stuff. I don't want to be here to deal with that nightmare. No. I have a hard time. We're in North Dakota and we're getting on our cell phones from all the, whether it's you guys or not, but we're getting the, there are no deer. I'm not seeing any deer. I sat all day. I didn't see this, da, 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 da. Did anybody stop to think that, number one, uh, you're sitting in most places, you're sitting. People used to drive deer on public yeah, land. People don't drive anymore. Farmers used to drive land, they get bunches of people together. I know guys, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, some of the guys that used to work for us do the big deer drives in the river bottoms and all that. And you know what, it's a good time and they shoot some pretty good bucks. Mm -hmm. But that gets deer moving for everybody. Yeah, it does. If you all go sit in the mm -hmm. woods and it's 54 degrees like it was, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and nobody moves around and everybody just sits all day, the deer stay in their normal patterns. Well, what's a deer going to do yeah. three quarters of the way through November when it's 50 some degrees out and the sun's out? Bed. Hmm. That's a shocker, honey. <laughs> well, this is why, you know, my stepdad hunts here. Yeah. With a gun. Has a tower that we put up for him. Yeah. He sits over my cornfield. You know where else he sits? He doesn't. He stays over the cornfield. Yeah. You know why? Not because I don't want him to shoot a deer, but because he knows and I know that if he's walking into that woods, the people sitting around it, there's deer pushing out. Yep. So yeah, I'm one of those guys. I don't want to push the deer out. No. You know, we want them here. Yeah. Obviously. So the numbers, yes, they're going to save that. Deer so what you're saying, normal. hold on a second. What you're <laughs> saying is if the deer don't move and they stay on your property, they don't get shot, and maybe next year they'll be bigger. Yeah. Or there could be more of them. Or more of them, yeah. Huh. Weird, isn't it? That's concept. You know, and it, I'll say this. This is funny because this week I talked to a good customer of mine at the shop. Yeah. He was asking me how we did all last and we're talking. And I said, how did you do? And he said, well, he's like, he hunts the same place, spend it forever. Mm -hmm. uh, real tall marsh. Yeah. You know, he said the marsh grass is probably five feet tall or better. Uh -huh. So not seeing much. He said... Seen a brown spot like all day sitting laying out there. He said, Well, he kept watching, watching. Finally, all of a sudden, the brown spot moves. Well, it's a deer. Mm -hmm. So its head comes up a couple times, sees it's a big buck. <clears throat> so, anyway, eventually the deer presents a shot. He shoots the buck. Goes in there, miserable yeah. to get it out. Older gentleman. Yep. Takes them forever to get this deer out of there. Big buck, old buck. Yep. Um, wasn't seeing another deer. So they get the deer out of there, take it back, long story short, cut it up, everything, use the whole deer like they do. And then he's like, you know, I wanted to shoot another one. He's like, but I didn't see a lot of deer. So I seen no point to go back out there and shoot another deer if I did see it. 
Because right. there already isn't a lot of dirt there. Right. Weird. Huh. I said, wow. I said, well, that's the that's the way you should do it. I said, in my opinion. No, I agree. Yeah, it's a great, it's a big buck. Yeah. You shot them, that's awesome. But you know the deer numbers there aren't quite what they were. Yeah. So why go back and shoot a doe yeah. that's now bred, most likely? Yep. And so he, now you just killed two or three deer. Here's the other concept <laughs> I've got, and that's a heat <clears throat> mic's exactly right with this, but the concept I see all the time, people yelling and screaming about the DNR. You can yell and scream about DNR all you want. Yep. Okay, the DNR are people that make the laws to try and help control our deer herd in the entire state of Wisconsin, not on the little piece of land that you hunt. Okay? So as a whole, guess what? You got plenty of deer in our state to hunt. So the DNR is actually doing a pretty damn good job of what they do. Do I always agree with the rules they make? No, I don't. Right. Okay? And everybody's big gripe as well. They got all these doe tags and all this, that, and the other thing. You don't have to yeah. shoot them. Don't shoot them. Well, my neighbor does. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you absolutely positive that your neighbor goes out and fills every one of his doe tags? Because <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I've got neighbors, and the one neighbor to my west, we both know, does not shoot does. He is quite mm -hmm. vocal about it. Yep. He's an old school hunter. Don't get me wrong. And they won't shoot a buck unless it's big. Mm -hmm. More power to them. Yep. But that creates problems for the rest of us landowners in the area because the doe herd is not being controlled. Yeah. And if you don't control your doe herd, guess what? The big bucks aren't going to stay on your spot yeah. if you have all the food and all the does are there. It overwhelms the properties that do have. Correct. So you start to have issues. So if you have a bunch of people that do the same thing, the DNR is going to issue doe tags because they want doe shot. We have representatives in each county that are supposed to represent our views. You also have the opportunity to go to the Conservation Congress meetings or online and go to these meetings and voice your opinions. The majority of the people that go on these things or don't go to these things yet you know, complain about what's happening is their own fault because they don't take the initiative to voice their opinions. Then you hear, well, my opinion doesn't matter even if I do voice it. Well, quit thinking about just yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's all of us as a whole, a hunting community. Okay? And the DNR has a job to try and create the best atmosphere possible. Mm -hmm. They're doing what they can because, remember, the DNR does not make law any longer. Nope. The bureaucrats and the majority of them that don't hunt make the laws. The DNR is there to consult and come up with these ideas. <clears throat> right? So the complaints about the DNR all the time aren't always justified. Don't get me wrong. In general, it's for the whole community. It's not for us specifically. And us specifically in our areas may not always agree with what they decide. I do understand that part. But that's, what, that's why you get to vote and make your opinions and uh, have your proposals put up and then from the proposals, they make the law. And each one of us has representatives in your own counties, so you can go and check that out, and you can voice your opinion to those individuals who can bring it to the Conservation <coughs> Congress. So feel free to do that. <laughs> but this whole thing gets me cranked up. Don't get me wrong, I understand the deer kill is down, but when Mike and I were driving back from North Dakota later in the gun season, there was a lot of dead deer on the side of the road, yeah. which somewhat indicates that, yeah, you're probably not uh, completely correct on the deer numbers, that they are way, way down. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, because I haven't checked into it, but somebody may be able, be able to inform us here in the comments. I don't really think, even with the drought we had this year, we had a huge EHD kill like we did a few years back which will really affect it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had a cold, hard winter in this state in a while, except for way, way up north, which is why part of the deer numbers are down. Mm -hmm. And then the bear kill and the wolf kill and all of that. There's plenty of aspects in northern Wisconsin that are contributing to low numbers in northern Wisconsin. <laughs> and if you look at the tag numbers up there, you'll see that the tag numbers are a lot lower than they were years back. So that's what the DNR can do to help that situation. And they won't let us shoot wolves again. But, 
you know how that goes. That's another story okay. all the way around. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 So yeah. I think that probably covers my view of uh, yeah, deer numbers. <laughs> you know, like you're saying with the, you know, don't shoot the does, don't do this. You know, if you're hunting specific place, especially if you have your own land, you know the people around you, see what they're doing mm-hmm. and figure it out. It'll help you determine what you need to do. Your place here is fine exam? It's, yeah, it's we what talked we do about here. It earlier. You know, so we at first we're going to try to harvest a few does out here this year. Um, it didn't end up happening. Um, now, several does have been taken mm-hmm. during the gun season here. Um, another one I just saw Kyle got hit two days ago on the road. Not here. Yeah. Around here. Right around here. Not here, yeah. Right around my property. Yeah. Um, another doe got hit on the road. Yeah. Uh, so there's two deer there, maybe three. Um, you know, a couple other does here, a couple other does there. Um, another guy's like, well, I just don't really want to shoot another doe this year. Can't happen. Mm-hmm. I can't let it happen because now they're knocked way down. So, you know, we take another one off. That's going to fawn. Yeah. You know, now you're cutting it down even more. You know, the bucks have already moved out. Yeah. Haven't seen a lot of activity back in here. So if you can kind of keep track around you, it kind of lets you know what you need to do on your own property. Yeah. You know. And so, yeah. You yeah. got to remember, too, when you're taking out those <laughs> at times of year. Here's the other thing about taking out those, you guys. just You can't just take out the big adults. <clears throat> you have to stagger your age group when you're taking out those. So. That's important too when it comes to deer numbers specifically, you know. Uh, educate you a little, educate yourself a little bit on that, and uh, make your own decisions for your own hunting land. But don't shoot everything in, you see on public. Well, the, the biggest thing with almost anything we talk about is educate yourself. Yeah, that's true. You know, before you you see what you um, see on TV or social media, because I'll tell you the most of it's BS. It's not accurate. It's a one-sided view. Mm-hmm. There's views both ways. Do we agree the numbers are probably down? They probably are. Probably. But it's not because of there, there's no deer. No. <laughs> there's a lot of factors that play into it. You know, don't don't let these things become a political one-sided thing because that's what they start to turn into. Yeah. Instead of knowing facts about both sides of it. Yeah. You know. Like so. I said, early, you know, <laughs> educate yourself on it too. And then make your own decisions based off of the, what you educate yourself on. We might, Mike and I might not even see things the same at certain times, but you know the views from yourself and everybody else around you might help you make a for your property make a better you know better decision. Public land is public land. That's a tough one all the way around. It is. Some people are hunting for meat. Some people are hunting for bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to hard to control that. The other aspect this year, there was quite a bit of corn left up too. Yeah, they're just starting to taking some corn off here the other day. No, it's I December. Know. I know. So there's a lot of corn up. Yeah. I mean, I see the, the corn. Man. Yeah. They're not coming out. No. It's just like when you're bow hunting. I mean, you got a lot of corn around you. You're not going to see as much. No. You know, and if you think about it now, on the back side of this, that corn saved a lot of deer. So next year, it should probably be, be some more deer around. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But that's a good thing. I was glad to see the corn still up after we're done bowhunting, to tell you the truth. Honest truth, yeah. Because saving deer's lives. For us, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Because we don't gun hunt, we're big bow hunters. Yeah. But, yeah. We appreciate you guys listening. Appreciate the question. <clears throat> uh, we ranted a little bit. I ranted a little bit on that one. But we uh, appreciate you guys listening. We want to see your guys' comments. Yep. If you have stuff that you want to you know, push through or something like that, and you don't know the people in your area, you can always get a hold of me and I can set you up with that information. Uh, more than willing to help you guys out to hear you have your voice heard. Uh, if you want to post your voice right here on the comments, we'd appreciate that also. If you guys want to just listen to the podcast, you can check us out on Google, Spotify, and iHeart, RSS.com, Apple. Amazon. Amazon. Also, check out our pretty faces right here on YouTube. Uh, If you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the Reaper in the lower right-hand corner. We'd appreciate that. Uh, If you want to get us on Instagram, it's Rush Outdoors WI. Also, The Obsession Podcast Hunting. We appreciate each and every one of you. Yo.